So when information is hidden, people like Julian Assange come along. What are your thoughts on his situation? Well, he's been quite irresponsible, I think, in many ways. Some stuff that he released was good to release and should have been released. But he was quite indiscriminate in what he put out. And a whole lot of essential activities involving our agents or American agents abroad defending our country and our values was compromised as a consequence of what Julian Assange did. So he needed to be far more selective in what he did. And uh, that's, that's unfortunately what I feel about Julian Assange. Would you rather see him extradited to America or Prince Andrew? Well, I don't think, I don't, I don't think uh, Julian should be extradited because, um, I mean, the, part of anything else, the Americans retain the death penalty and we should not, we should not uh, extradite people who can be subject to capital punishment. Uh, that's a standard uh, approach that this country has rightly had over many years. Um, I don't think he should be extradited necessarily. I think he should be tried in this country for anything which people... You know, if the Americans got a case to bring, I think he should be tried in, this, in the courts in this country. What was it like meeting Mikhail Gorbachev? I was very honoured to meet Mikhail Gorbachev. He's an interesting guy, and he had with him the interpreter that I remember him having with him when uh, the TV pictures of him meeting Reagan and Reykjavik. Same guy. And he was campaigning on the environment... And the tragedy of Mikhail Gorbachev was that he tried to modernise the Soviet Union and did so in many ways, and in fact caused in some ways, or accelerated at least, the downfall of the Soviet Union. And of course he's not forgiven for that in Moscow. And his popularity is, is almost zero in, in Russia these days. But actually I think he did a huge amount for the world. And, you know, I'd like to think that, that he will be remembered in a favourable way. And you were there in a ministerial capacity? No, I was just an MP, actually, on that particular occasion. But um, I was very honoured to meet him. And, and one of the great things about being an MP is you do meet people like that who you wouldn't otherwise come across in life. And, you know, I remember, I remember going to a, 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 um, a, an event where Bill Clinton was speaking. And what amazed me about that was that as soon as he came in the room, the room was filled with his charisma in a way that, uh, I find quite astonishing. You know, he just filled the room without doing anything. It's quite extraordinary. And, you know, so you do meet people. I mean, one of the most interesting people I met was the Russian ambassador at the UN uh, back in 1998. And he was this man who was just incredibly intelligent. And it's almost as if the chemical connections in your brain that form thoughts and add things up and cause you to speak and so on, the thought processes, you know, his chemical reactions about three times anyone else's. I mean, what a, what a brain. So he was, he was a most interesting character. Who was more charismatic, Bill Clinton or Paul McCartney? <laughs> well, um, charismatic in different ways they were. I mean, Bill Clinton was, was able to fill the room with his charisma in a way that just extraordinary, just uh, his persona was there. Paul McCartney, I like Paul McCartney. I've met him three or four times and he actually at one point funded an animal welfare researcher for me in the House of Commons. Um, I think Paul McCartney's great, uh, not just musically, but just as a person. And uh, I met him in the House of Commons first time when he came to a lunch for vegetarian MPs, of which there weren't very many, I was there. And what I liked about that was that he went round the room and made sure he spoke to everybody and chatted to everybody and answered their questions. And it's almost as if Brian Epstein's training had, was still there. And there are so many people like that, you know, rock musicians, who are just so arrogant and just, I am the be-all and end-all, and, you know, I want, um, you know, shrimps from Thailand flowing across to Arizona or somewhere. You know, you just these, these people who've got these pretensions. And Paul McCartney wasn't like that. He was just an ordinary guy and just very friendly. And, uh, you know, I've met him a couple of times subsequently. I just think... Uh, and I'll tell you what he did do. Um, when, I, um, when I brought my first album out... Um, I sent him a copy, well, I dropped a copy in actually to his um, offices in Soho Square because uh, it was just around the corner where I was and uh, I said, here's a, here's a you know, thanks for um, supporting me on Animal Warfare stuff, here's my CD, hope you like it. And he sent me a handwritten note back, you know, which I've now got and you know, I thought, oh. there's no need for him to do that and it's just, such a nice, such a nice man and uh, so, yeah, so of the two of them, I think I'd rather have Paul McCartney. Was Dolly Parton an ordinary woman? Dolly Parton, I went to an event with her, 
Um, and she was, again, you know, an admirer because what she was doing was spending her time trying to get books to children who otherwise wouldn't have books to read. And she had this, this kind of structure, particularly in America, I think, of handing out books to children. And she gave this rather delightful presentation and speech, and I just, I'd never known her beforehand, and I really warmed to her, actually, as a person, when I saw her speak. And um, there's also a quote of hers I quite like, which is that um, she said, and I'm not doing an American accent, by the way, but she said, the way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you have to put up with the rain. <laughs> <laughs> so I was telling you earlier about my Arizona incarceration yeah, story yeah. for ecstasy trafficking. When I got back, I think it was Gatwick Airport my parents picked me up at, and then they took me to my sister's house, and I was interviewed um, shortly thereafter in a, in a BBC studio by Eddie Murr. What are your thoughts on Eddie Murr? Oh, I like Eddie Murr. I think he's a great broadcaster. And um, when I was um, in my in my parliamentary time, it was one of my it was my, one of my famous written questions, which caused Peter Mandelson to resign uh, about the Hindu passport affair. Uh, it's always good, I found, to ask a question to which you know the answer already. Mm -hmm. um, but it turned out that that particular question. Uh, which was what representations he'd made about the Hindu passport applications to the Home Office, was the one that forced him to resign. And Jack Straw, to his credit, um, either because he wanted to do things properly or didn't like Mandelson, one of the two, insisted the question was answered, although Mandelson tried to get it suppressed. And he had to resign as a consequence of that. Um, now, after that, Eddie Mayer came down to my, my house or my office in Lewis and interviewed me, so that's the first time I met him. And I immediately warmed to him. I thought he was, he was great. And uh, we talked about music as much as anything else. Um, so that was good. And then I loved his interview with Boris Johnson, going back a bit of bit time. I don't even know that one, Sean. But um, you know, Boris had done all these dodgy things in his past, which, of course, the, the right-wing press was very happy to forget about. And Eddie Mayer, with a bit of guts um, on the BBC, said... Um, he, he, he reeled off some of these things, and his first question was, Mr. Johnson, you're a nasty piece of work, aren't you? It was a great question. <laughs> and, of course, Boris Johnson was not expecting this. And he got a really rough time from Eddie Mayer, but all factually based. Oh, my dad's you know. going to love this story. Shout out to Derek. <laughs> <laughs> and you should, it's still there. It's on the internet. Have a listen to it. It's a great interview. What of course, Eddie's now gone to BBC to LBC. What nasty things was Boris up to? He was, um, he was um, talking to his mate, uh, Darius Guppy about um, Darius Guppy I think wanted to on this phone call wanted to uh, get someone beaten up and wanted Boris to give him a phone number that's one of the things <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs>